So let's dive in on independent play. We have a lot of questions that were submitted in advance from people, a huge range on there in, in terms of ages, actually people asking as young as six months up to 19 years old. So question for you, should we dive into those individual questions or do you want to outline your system and your approach to independent play and then jump into the questions? I don't know your system that well, so you tell me which, which makes more sense. Yeah, maybe I can give you kind of a brief uh, introduction to the system and then we can take it one question at a time because Perfect. there is consistency across the ages, but uh, you know, there's some differences obviously depending on your situation. So that might be the best. Perfect. All right. That sounds cool. great. Okay. Yeah. So um, I'll start by saying I think that independent play to me is a skill. So it's something that, um, you know, many of us remember from our generation growing up that our parents would kind of put us out in the backyard or put us in our room and say, go play, right? And that was like a very big part of childhood for most people who are grown ups today. But children in today's culture and uh, just in our modern times have kind of been taught that um, they get basically passive entertainment all the time. So they're constantly, um, there's kind of a cultural messaging going around that as a parent, your job is to entertain your child all the time, to give them an enriching environment, to make sure that they are engaged and um, play with them all the time. And while all of those things are really great for kids and are definitely true, um, the trade-off is that as a parent, you, you literally can't do that 24-7, right? Especially when you're stuck at home, probably trying to work from home or have your kids home from school. And then what ends up happening when your kids won't play alone is, aside from the fact that, I'll get into a little bit of the fact that independent play is great for kids, but also as a parent, you can't be present for your kids if you are constantly having to entertain them. And so then what happens is you're halfway there with them most of the time and your kids feel that. And so that's the root of a lot of behavioral issues. And so with independent play, the, the process that I teach people is essentially to um, take incremental steps each day to get your child comfortable with building the skill of independent play. And so I often relate it to a meditation practice, if you've ever practiced meditation before, um, because sometimes people feel guilty when they, they try to make their kids play alone and their kids whine or complain and they think, oh no, am I doing something wrong? Like, am I supposed to be entertaining them or playing with them? And so with meditation, if you've ever practiced it before, there's a discomfort period that you go through when you first sit down and you have to be with your own thoughts and with yourself for the first time. And it's kind of like, oh, why am I doing this? Like my mind is racing. I don't want to do this. I'm distracted. And then over time, as you build that practice, you know, we have so much research that shows us the many, many benefits of, of meditation. And the same thing is true for independent play. So there's, if kids are used to having that constant entertainment, there's a discomfort period that they have to go through. And so as a parent, you have to learn to guide them through that process and not let your emotions or guilt get in the way of the process. So does that all make sense so far? It does. And the other thing that, that is striking me too is when you say, you know, emotions and guilt, but sometimes it also just seems like the easier road as a parent, right? <laughs> and you're like, yeah, yeah. like, sometimes you're like, oh, Jesus, I cannot listen to them cry or whine or whatever. And so I'll just, I'll just do this. I'll just make it go away quickly and I'll just in, engage with them. So I think I, for me, at least, it sounds like there's probably a, a factor of having to train myself through it too as a parent. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Well, so that's one of the first things I will say um, off the bat is that this takes a little bit of time. So normally, um, depending on your child's temperament, depending on their age, it might take a few weeks to really get this practice down. And so I do recommend starting this, like especially over a weekend or maybe a week when your workload's a little lighter and you know that you're going to be dealing with some of the kind of back and forth with your child, because it's not like you're going to sit them down on day one and they're going to sit and play for 30 minutes alone if they've never Ever done that before right so um, so getting into the system of it um, basically the way it works is that you set up a space for your child and one of the most important things is that they're not overstimulated and so if you just put your child in a playroom with 10,000 toys, um, they're not gonna be able to find engaged play because they're constantly going to be jumping from one activity to the next. And like, oh, let me do this for a few minutes. Let me do this for a few minutes. And I'm sure like you've seen this in your child, right? When there's a lot going on. 
And so instead to set them in a space where whether this means you spend a couple days beforehand cleaning out their room and really getting, you know, if you've ever heard of toy rotation, kind of putting some things away and then only leaving a few things out and that they really have just a few activities because then that gives them the chance to get engaged. Mm -hmm. um, so that's the starting point. So setting up the space and then basically you just start really small. So especially with young kids, five minutes a day on the first day. So set a timer for them so that they can hear it go off and just let them know, hey, today we're going to try this new thing. You're going to play by yourself in here. If the child's really young, you could do it in the same room. You can make like a little blanket or a playpen that they're playing and you can be just a few feet away. And then you can kind of incrementally move away day to day so you get a little more distance from them. Um, but for an older child, you can just say, hey, go to this room, you know, for 15 minutes is probably a good starting place up like, I don't know, four or five years old, depending on the temperament of the child and how well they're playing already. Um, mm -hmm. So it's kind of some like gray area, right, depending on how old your kid is and what kind of player they are and things like that. Um, but then basically you just build up over time. So each day you just increase the time a little bit. If you have one of those little like kitchen timers, start with five minutes. And when they finish, if they stay there the whole time, you come over and say, wow, you did such a great job. You know, I'm so proud of you. You played by yourself. Awesome. And um, then the next day you do seven minutes and 10 minutes and 15 minutes. And then you build up to like 30 minutes. And usually what ends up happening is that over time, kids will start playing for even longer than 30 minutes. So if your kid's under like two, probably not. 30 minutes is probably about the max you're going to get. But up like three or four years old, I see kids play alone for like an hour straight or a half hour a couple times a day. So, but the big thing to remember is that it really is a skill and there is that like discomfort period in the beginning.